My name is William Conley, a North American architect, and I am here today at the wonderful Brindiamor Estate in Guanacaste in the northwest region of Costa Rica. It is my privilege to have Rolando Barahona Sotela, the architect of Brindiamor, and the internationally known Costa Rican winner of the National Prize in Architecture for 2010. Brindiamor was built in 1983 as a retreat and family home situated in a stunning setting on a riverbank just below a natural waterfall. Don Rolando, welcome. How did this project come to you? Uh, what did the client ask? I was quiet in my life, everyday life, and all of a sudden mm. this uh, person I, I, I knew calls me and says that he has a person that wants to meet an architect that has open imagination. We set a date and we uh, came together, and my surprise, for my surprise, is that uh, Mr. Gene Peacock told me that he wanted a replica, a total replica of a house that he had bought in the surroundings of San Jose. I was like my, with my mouth open because that was not my dream, exactly. So I said, I better keep my mouth shut. And uh, I, I waited. I have this patience with clients that I, I always use. So, um, I said, well, we can see this house that you want to, to, uh, to, to do another one, like this, the, the same thing. But then I would like you to, to, to see all the things that I have designed and uh, they're already done, they're already there. So we went, he saw the things, he didn't say anything. I didn't know what he was thinking, what he was feeling. I didn't know I, nothing at all. There was no movement in his eyes, nothing. I didn't know what was happening. So we came back, he left me in my house, okay, bye-bye, and he didn't even say he was going to call or not. I, I said there was a week, and there they came the second week, and all of a sudden, uh, my secretary says, uh, this uh, person named uh, Mr. Peacock is calling you. I said, okay. And uh, he said, Rolando, how are you? Sorry I didn't call back before, I was thinking. But my decision, after all these days, is that I want you to be the architect of the dream of my house for the, for the future years, the, the, the last years of my life. I want you to do the paradise I've, I've been dreaming about, and uh, you're the person that I'm looking for. And now, the second thing is that forget the replica of anything. Do whatever you want. Use the materials the way you want. The only thing I would like to use in this project is the exposed concrete because I think I love it and I, I think it would be a great thing to combine with the, with the natural stone of the site. I said, that's exactly what I thought when, when, I, when I saw the place because in between we came to see the place. Uh, my fear just disappeared and all of a sudden my heart opened you know, like a flower, and I said, this is one of, of, of the unique experience you can have in your life, once in your lifetime. And that was the way it was.
How did you start to think about the project when it did come to you? Was it the site? Was it uh, philosophy? Was it poetry? What was your thought? When I came to the site, I said, well, Guanacaste is Guanacaste, it's hot, it's uh, this. I don't like hot weather much. That was one thing against me. So I said to myself, if we come to do something in this, in this uh, property that we're going to see, to look at, it has to be very, very special so that the fresh air can go through. That was my first feeling before coming to see the property. When I came in and saw the site, I really fell in love with the site and began feeling that I understood why this person, this, this, this man, he was very, very, a very pleasant person, but strong at the same time. And I felt very comfortable with him. Uh, I, I, I said, I know why he's choosing this site to make his, his paradise home. So um, I came that time. I saw around, and I just keep those feelings, go away, come again another time. I have a second feeling. At the third feeling, I was walking around near the water when I saw on the shadow of some old trees that were on the, on the site, some mushrooms. And I saw little ants going under the mushrooms, and I said, hmm, something is opening here in my imagination. This is going to be something. And I, and I said, these mushrooms, if you take these things to a big, big scale, they're going to be a protection. And at the same time, the ants are not getting sunburned, but at the same time, they're getting the air that goes under these things. And it was magnificent. The idea was really... Those lights that go in, in, your, in, in, your, in your brain and the, you know, like an explosion. It, it's, it's a pleasure. It's it a was, pleasure. It was easy and it came from the site. <laughs> and it came from the site. That was the, I, I always try that the site touches me, you know. I need the place, the site, to love me, to touch me, so I can respond. Every project has its uh, special challenges. Uh, on this, what was that with, with this house, the, the special challenge? Was it the, the, was it the site? Was it the remoteness? Was it the mechanics or the structure or the client? What was the challenge, the biggest one here? The challenge was the word paradise for the last days of my life. Mm -hmm. And that triggered me, in, in, my, in my brain, something that I said, this is, even if it's the last experience of my life, this is going to be it. And when somebody tells you, you can do whatever you want, use the materials, whatever you use the scale, whatever you want, it's too much. It's so open, so open, you have so many choices that you say, I mean, you, you come to your bed at night and you say, what am I going to do? So, in, at that moment, what I do is just relax and say, Rolando, everything is okay. The world is still quiet. You're there. You just let your imagination travel to all those places you have been traveling in, 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 in some impossible things. You know, the impossible dream. But the first thing I do is to try to get into the heart, into the emotion, into the, that, that feeling of the person that is going to inhabit the place. For me, that's the main thing. Before that, I don't even think in a line. I can't. I shouldn't, and I don't do it. Uh, from, from the beginning of, of, of my designing years, I saw that the only thing to, to get a real answer to a specific person or group of persons or a family or an office group or whatever is to really get into the, the, the spirit, the soul of those persons. Even things that you have to, to feel by intuition. Not that they tell you because people 
tell things that they have influenced by the, their environment, the people around them. Those things are, you know, things that they, they really repeat and repeat. But from there, you have to get the essence of those words and look for the real meaning. There is the root of your project. Was it difficult to get inside of Mr. Peacock's no. brain? No. With his words, with his emotion, he was very emotional, like me. So with those, those two persons emotionally connecting. And we're going to do this, and the stone, and look at the sky, and look at all these surroundings. And it was, it, was, it was too much. It was exciting. The water, we're going to use the water. And I, I went to the lake and did like the water like that. It was, it was really, really, really emotional. And those emotions open all these doors of the imagination. And you then travel. Travel. And all of a sudden, when you were sleeping, I was sleeping, and all of a sudden, whoosh, I, wish, I, I saw these things that I call the mushrooms, and from there on, this house for me is the mushroom house. Whatever name they give, for me is the mushroom house, because my baby is motion house. And then you have to open up so that your baby, all of a sudden, at the end, you have to give it away in adoption. <laughs> Here it is, it's no longer my baby. It's own baby. Has its own life. Of course. It was done for somebody else. It sounds like there are many, many vivid memories of the process, but is there one or two that really stand out in your, in your, in your mind, in your memory of, of especially vivid times? I would say the vivid times, well, of course, the first day of, of what we call the first stone is really exciting. But that was not it. The excitement came when we really confronted the moment of the beginning of the construction of these big umbrellas. In a, in, a, in, a, in a zone where there is, in a country that is a seismic, uh, uh, with a lot of, of, of possibilities that can happen all of a sudden, surprisingly, it's really, you have to be very careful. But at the same time, I never saw anything like this in, in my country. Uh, some people afterwards say, well, not in your country, not, not, not any other place. Uh, it's not a matter of doing something that was never done. It's to do something that really feels, fulfills the, 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 the dreams of a, of a human being. It's the answer to a, to a question that is always asked by a client. Is this person going to fulfill what I'm imagining? But then I know and I'm sure after so many years of design that that person really doesn't know what he really wants. He wants a sensation. He wants an emotion to be fulfilled. Well, there is an energy, an undeniable energy of this site. And it's still here. Whenever one enters, there is this energy that just invigorates you. And is that something you were aware of from the very beginning on this site? There, there, are, there are two kinds of energy here. The main energy is that I've been studying geobiology from the beginning of my, of my career and uh, studying little by little, advancing and getting more details and things. When I came to the place, I used this tour, um, uh, metal roads, and I used them to, to find the, the focal points of energy. This place has two specific places that is really too much energy coming from the inside of the, of, of, of the, of the earth to the outside. I would say this site is like, uh, I don't want to compare, but you know that these people that did the, the, the pyramids, that did the, the, the Teotihuacan pyramids and in Peru and all this, they knew that that energy was there. That's why they, they built the place in that specific site. And I felt it and I knew it was. Those focal points are exactly the points where the umbrellas are. 
the most exciting and the most impressive experience was when my these friends from Canada came to my office and they were talking that they brought this uh, friend of theirs I don't remember if it was at that day or afterwards and that this lady said that there was a concentrated energy in those focal points I couldn't believe it because then it was not my story it's the earth story yeah it's, it was real I knew it was real but for me but was it real for the rest of the people, a person that really knows how to detect this, this energy? And I said, mm, I'm not so wrong. I was not so wrong, but the, the second energy. The second energy is the energy that is created around as an atmosphere of an existing energy. The energy that we human beings, are ba as, as bags of, of, of water, we, are, we transmit energy and we connect with things we see, with things we feel. And this connection with this site makes this energy stronger. So definitely, this is, this, I would say this is a unique place, and that's why I would love that this place gets his original life, you know, going through its veins, could we say? <laughs> which in this case is a structure, but it's, it's, it's not a structure. You know what? The water is the connection here. Uh, I use the water as a, the element that connects everything and brings everything together, like an embrace. The water here is the element that is used together with all the nature surrounding, with the sky that is a protector. It's the, main, it's the first skin that we have around the project. People say, it's too far away. No, it's not too far away. It's there. In between those umbrellas, we can see the sky, but you'd only, it's not only that you can see it, you can feel it if you pay attention. It's the, the intangible world, which I pay attention. There is another thing that I always use, and, and now, uh, actually, I'm going to Mexico to give a, a conference and a, and a workshop, and I'm gonna work with the students, this thing of the upside down, the other side of the materialistic world, the intangible because they have to get in contact with this not seen world that we designers have to pay attention to. And when I talk about these things, people say, this guy's crazy. What is he talking about? <laughs> it's, it's nothing, it's there. Well, everything, when we move, we are moving a volume. We are moving a, a, a mass and we have to displace this air, these molecules to fill it with our molecules. It's, it's fascinating. And you have to be conscious that when you displace these molecules that occupied a very exciting, dynamic, natural space, you're saying, give me the space. You have to fill it with real, positive energy. If you fill it with negative energy, that energy is going to stay there for as long as the, as the building is going to be there. And can be every day more negative and more negative if, we, if it was done the wrong way. That's the way I feel, that's the way I have proven through, through the years that, that it's true, it comes true. Lord Corbusier described a home as a machine for living. I personally don't think that that uh, is intended as a technological description. But how would you describe this home and its place in the human environment? I definitely always understood this machine, Le Corbusier's machine, as something more humanistic. Uh, definitely, I, I agree. But for me, this project is a seed that grew from the natural earth that grew spontaneously that was an idea that was planted and with our water with our imagination with our love with our passion be began to grow and grow and came and, and and it became material but materialistically speaking I would say that that material thing becomes alive 
when you it's like a baby a baby survives because you give it you give the baby love this project got so much love from the owner from me the, the designer and even from the people that were involved in the construction they were suffering a lot there was a lot of sun there was a lot of, 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 uh, of possibilities against their kidneys because the, the metal rods in, in the sun uh, burning through the, the, the reflection of this were going directly to their kidneys but at the same time they were so excited they, they, for you don't do it, this every day not even less in, 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 uh, in 83, 84 I mean it was something out of, uh, uh, out of, of, of our world in Costa Rica people began saying that there was a, a building that is going to be for uh, for uh, <laughs> for uh, people that came from other planets, there was for helicopters that were for whatever. What are you talking about? And at the same time, you say, well, let them let them talk, let them say whatever they want, the stories. Mr. Pico had to close the the, the 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 door out there because all of a sudden they were around looking to see what they they saw. You know, the witches that were doing strange things here. I know. I want we. Human beings are very curious, and you know this is a small town. Liberia is a small town, so they they were beginning to 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 know that something was happening, that something out of the normal was happening here. So what are they doing? What are they going to do? <gasps> something is high is coming out, and you know, and at the same time, it's excitement, and at the same time, gives the 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 the, the, the working man emotion. They need to be uh, stimulated, and the stimulation was that they were part of something special that was being done. Good design has always been concerned with the environment, but words and concepts like sustainability and green are more recent than this building. Uh, yet one sees all around uh, attention to detail and to construction uh, that could be described today in such a way. What, at the time, what were your thoughts on, uh, on the matter and how conscious were they in your execution of the design? Since I was studying architecture, I was dreaming with something I loved since I was a child, nature. I was in love with nature. Uh, maybe because my, my father used to, 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 to plant roses and uh, the, 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 the apple trees in the backyard and things like that. My mother saying they, they like poetry, they were very artistic, all this. But nature for me was the inspiration. So when I began doing my projects, I always said I have to go by the hand of nature. Nature has to be my inspiration. Nature has to be my friend. Nature is going to help me make wonderful places to, for people to feel comfortable, to feel happy, to be at ease. And. Uh, Definitely, I, don't, I, I never gave a word to this sustainability. Actually, to these days, I don't believe much in all these things that they talk about sustainability and ecology and things because this is getting distorted. You know, going, it's going some other place. Mm -hmm. It's getting to a place where everything is the image outside and not reality. I believe in this. Feeling the air that refreshes you feeling the, 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 the sensation, not only the sensation, the, 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 the guiltiness of those plants, of that water, giving you the, fr the freshness or the refreshness of, of, of the space that you need to make it. Uh, 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 like I said, the seed that grows as part of that nature. For me, that's sustainability. But the first thing, sustainability, is the spontaneous action or attitude of a human being. That's the main, the main point in all this balance with nature, in all this balance of less um, uh, artificial energy and use the natural energy of the site, of the world, of the planet. That, that's what we have to use. And here I think I think, and now that I, I see it again, every time I come here, I feel it that I, I was not so wrong.
And a, a question of a little bit more fun. Uh, what would you like to see here in 500 years? How do you envision it? Is this a living home or is this Machu Picchu? <laughs> uh, I, that's something difficult for me to imagine. you know why? Because for me, life since about 15 years ago, no, 20 years ago, it's today. For me, life is today. I don't care about tomorrow. I care about what I do today because this that I do today is going to be the root of the tomorrow that they talk about. Whatever so that may be. So if it's a good root, if it's well done, the best I can, I hope it's going to be positive in the future. As simple as that. I don't, I, I, I don't believe that the Incas or the, or, or, or the, or the, the Aztecas were thinking of what they were doing for the future of 500 years or whatever. They were very astrological and all these things, but they were not thinking of the future. They were thinking of what they felt in the moment. And for me, life is today. For me, life is now. I'm here sitting I mean, in a dialogue with you. That's what matters. After, I don't care. Maybe I'll be hungry or not. Now, I don't, I don't even, I'm not even feeling hungry because I'm concentrated in this. I'm very emotional. So for me, life is the emotional moment of every... And if it's sadness, you also have to be open to be sad. There are sad moments, like, for instance, there were difficult moments in this construction. I have to be open to those moments to have a solution. If this building had a message to the future, what would it say? What is it saying? I would say that the message is uh, a, happy, a happy life is possible in a place like this. That's okay, the message. That's simple. I, I see it as simple as that. If a person comes to a place, to this place, and doesn't feel happy, well, first of all, it was not built for that person. It was for somebody else. But as far as I know, most of the people that had visited this place or have been living or staying here for a while, they feel something special. For me, that was the main purpose of the thing. Even if it was done for a specific person. Afterwards, I know that this place combines, mixes with nature, with air, with the clouds, with everything that is around, and it's part of it. You say, what is that important, the more important, the water or the concrete or the stones or that palm tree? Everything is important. Without that, there's nothing. Without the energy that we, is intangible, it's nothing because it's dead. If this place, there is a TV uh, series or whatever that they, they talk about the world when, they, when, they, when there are no human beings. I don't know how many years from now. It, all this is going to be totally taken by nature. And you know what? This living creature, for me, it's a living creature. It's going to be so happy. Because it's part of it. There is nothing new. It's part of it. It's going to be embracing more, more tight. It's going to be embraced more boring love. And it's going to be, become part of it. Unfortunately, we won't be there. Don Rolando, thank you very much for the, taking the, the time to speak with us today, especially in this setting. This is just a marvelous opportunity to to hear you speak about your baby and the life you have given. Thank you, because uh, I tell you the truth, it's been very emotional. Many things don't come to my mind and I, I, I get too emotional, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I understand. Thank you.